back at it again and oh boy we gotta talk about this another one bites the dust well not really because i think that's like a saying when someone passes away right i think that's the saying for when someone passes away another one bites the dust well another one um Another Democrat has flipped. We'll say that, okay? <laughs> I was trying to think of another good saying, but I couldn't think of one. Um, Nebraska State Senator, a longtime Democrat. <laughs> another one. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you are new. And boy, is it glorious to watch Democrats lose everyone. Not only are they losing voters... They're losing their own politicians, too. Now, let's dive in. Door to door that you believe in. Door to door that you believe in. As a process we've gone through down here as senators, I've tried to stick with those principles. That has not changed for me. I asked the Democratic Party, Douglas County, to respect that I'm pro-life, that I'm a member of the Roman Catholic Church. And my beliefs are based on that. Douglas County Democrats, instead of respecting it, they decided to punish it. They said you cannot participate, you can't be a delegate, we're not going to share our party resources. I continue to vote pro-life. The State Democratic Party decided to censure me. I continue to vote pro-life. This is not an easy decision. After 40 years of being a registered Democrat, having your grandfather tell you when you're 10 years old, what, what are we? We're Irish, we're Catholic, and we're Democrats. That kind of stuck with me. And we had many discussions after that that a lot of things he tried to teach me didn't stick. But, <laughs> but. It's never easy for someone to make this kind of decision, but what makes it easier is the people standing behind me. Over the last year, regardless of my decision switching parties, they have been so supportive. Based on the things that would be said in the media or in social media, they were very supportive. We had great discussions about what the Republican Party is doing where they're trying to go, how I potentially could fit in there. But the greatest thing about it is now I can participate again. When something's taken away from you as potentially being able to attend a meeting, they say, well, we don't want you here, and we're not going to share our resources with you, that hits you pretty hard. But it also makes you appreciate something about our democracy, the idea of being able to participate. Today I'm announcing I am now going to be a registered Republican in the state of Nebraska. <laughs> Yeah, longtime Democrat senator in the state of Nebraska of 40 plus years has now flipped to Republican because Democrats have gone too far. They've gone way, way too far. And, you know, this isn't the first instance of a Democrat flipping. There have been quite a few. I think we should take a little trip down memory lane, shall we? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that idea. Check it out. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution, who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police but protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, who believe in open borders, who weaponize the national security state to go after their political opponents, and above all, who are dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Now, I believe in a government that's of the people, by the people, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, it stands for a government that is of, by, and for the powerful elite. 
Now, I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent minded Democrats to join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer stomach the direction that the so-called woke Democratic Party ideologues are taking our country, then I invite you to join me. So that was obviously Tulsi Gabbard when she decided to walk away from the Democrat Party. And she perfectly described everything or every reason why people should be walking away from the Democrat Party. I couldn't have said that any better myself. These folks are tyrants. These folks uh, have weaponized the justice system. But um, what other story, and I believe I showed you guys this a while back, um, but one other one was a Democrat mayor. Check it out. Tonight, Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson is opening up for the first time on local TV about his choice to switch political parties and become a Republican. Our political reporter, Jack Fink, asked him about that and some other very pressing issues in tonight's exclusive interview. I've thought about it a while, but I think Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson says he really started seriously thinking about becoming a Republican after George Floyd's murder by Minneapolis police officers and the resulting defund the police movement. And I had to be honest with myself and I had to do some inventory and I, I realized that, you know, I became a Democrat at 18 when I voted for the first time. I turned 48 this year. And, you know, 30 years is a long time, and I'm not the same guy uh, 30 years later. It, it became very clear to me that I was in the wrong party um, and that there really is no conservative wing of the Democratic Party left. It's certainly not on that issue. Uh, and so I switched. As you know, Democrats sharply criticized your decision, and, and some called it, quote, a betrayal of trust uh, of your voters. How do you respond to that? It doesn't even make sense. The voters in Dallas vote for a mayor on a nonpartisan basis. When you have a high profile member of a party leave, you have to say something. And I suppose there's something they came up with was he betrayed the voters. It's factually, um, it, it, it's, well, it's on its face ridiculous, actually. We are long overdue. He says when he ran for mayor in 2019, he didn't run as a Democrat, but someone who could solve problems in Dallas, and that this year he ran on his record. As for the timing of his announcement, three months after being reelected by a wide margin, the mayor says he made up his mind to vote in the Republican primary this coming March and knew it would become public anyway. Yes, he there does. It, it makes another one. Our interview comes as Mark... So, yeah, you had... Uh... Dallas mayor flipping uh, to Republican and people had an issue with it. But, you know, the, the funny thing about that, it's it's like y'all didn't think he was already running things as a Republican just because I had a D next to his name didn't mean he wasn't running things like a Republican. Now he just officially has the R next to his name. And once he voted, you guys were going to see it anyway. So. Might as well tell you now, right? <laughs> Might as well just tell you because people were going to be scratching their heads. <clears throat> but, you know, uh, everybody is waking up to uh, these these Democrats, man. Everyone. It's <laughs> it's honestly glorious to see, you know, um, it's it's a it's a great sign uh, when everybody is well. I won't say everybody, but a lot of people are all saying some of the same things, you know, um, even some Democrats. And I've shown you guys those videos. Uh, Democrat voters are like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not supporting these guys. I I'm voting for Trump. What I'm seeing the Democrats do to them. It, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And I've shown you guys several of those videos. Um, so, yeah, when you have voters and politicians, you know, flipping parties uh, flipping their support, you've got a major issue. You've got a major issue. And on top of that, Democrats have got all these other issues to deal with, right? Uh, literally, I mean, this country is... <whistles> Part of me feels bad for Uncle Trump. I mean, think about it. This, Uncle Trump is going to go from courtroom to courtroom to the White House and, I mean, a busy, packed schedule every single day for the next four years. 
because there's so many different issues that he's going to have to fix in such a short time. There's so many different things. So, so many. I mean, you, you, you name it and it, it, it's, it's probably messed up, <laughs> right? You name something in this country and it's probably messed up. The gas prices all whacked out, right? Price, too, too high. Grocery prices too high, right? Everything. You name it, the crime rate, too hot. <laughs> Justice system, too corrupt, right? Oh, man. Uh, there, there's just so many different things that need to be fixed. And honestly, I, I don't think he'll be able to do it all, right? That's obvious. Um, I just hope that he chooses the right ones to do first. Me personally... I don't know. I'll, I'll pose this question to you guys. Would you rather have all of the the few big things fixed, right? That are going to take some time, some finagling, some back and forth, you know, a lot of work, right? They could possibly take the entire four years. Would you, would you rather have a few big things fixed or a whole bunch of small things? You know, some legislation put here for this, legislation put here for that, put here for this, 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 this. You know, just like a million small things or a few big major things. What's your opinion? Let me know. Because there, there, there's a lot. And like I said, I, I don't see how he could possibly get it all done. And yes, I know he has a cabinet. He's got help, you know, assistance and whatnot. There, there's help around him. But still, I... I there was a story that I saw that uh, was talking about, and I can't confirm it, right? I do want to say that. Um, so, allegedly, there was a story that came out that the Biden administration is busy setting up roadblocks for Donald Trump when he steps into office so that there isn't a whole lot he can do once he's in office. And if he can do something, it's going to take a really long time in order to get it done. So when you have a situation like that, you know, combined with all of the different problems, you know, and that, that, that's, that's part of the reason why I compared it to an angry tenant who is destroying the property on the way out. They've been evicted and now they just want to destroy it um, just because they're angry. And that's what it seems like Democrats are doing. I mean, look at the whole protest on the college campuses. Has Joe Biden said anything? Just saying. Just saying. Y'all let me know what you thought about this one in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.